Hello everyone. In this video, we will see about objects in ServiceNow. These are pretty much similar to what are objects in JavaScript. If you are liking my content, please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit that like button. This is the agenda of this video. If you want to jump to any specific topic, link to these topics are given in the description. First of all, what are objects? Objects are used to store data values. These are similar to variables like they are used to store the values. Similarly, objects can also be used to store the values. The only difference is we store values in objects as name value pair. This is how we are storing values in the objects. I have declared an object called car and we are storing the values as name value pair. The name of one property is company and the value of that property is Ford. Next, the property is model and the value of that property is Mustang. And the third property is color and the value of that property is black. The name value pairs are stored like this. And these company, model and color, they are called properties and the values are Ford, Mustang, black. If you want to store values of an object, for example, this car, this is how you can have the properties and values of that particular object. In our case, this is car. Similarly, you can store properties and values of an incident, of a change record or anything else. Now we will see how can we declare an object and its properties. We will take an example in our service now where I will declare an object and I will create three properties for that called incident number, category and short description. Let's quickly jump to service now. I will be using background scripts and I will just zoom in a bit. Now we will declare an object where INC OBJ and we will give curly braces and this is how you actually define an object and to define properties you can give the property name here for example number we will be storing the incident number and then we will give a colon and then incident number and then we will separate it by a comma and we will give the next property name called category and then again the category name then we will again separate it by a comma and we can give the third property name which is short description and then we will give the value of short description. This is the declaration of an object. Now to populate these values, I will do a glide record where gr equal to new glide record. If you are not aware about glide records, please click on the top right corner. I have already copied a sys id of an incident and I will just paste it here and I will store the values of this incident into these properties. I can say gr.number, gr.category. These are the backend names of the incident columns. And lastly, gr.short underscore description, which is also the backend name of this field. Now we have declared an object and there are three properties and three values assigned to it in name value manner. Next, we can declare functions inside an object as well. We will declare a function called get details and it will return all details of this object. To declare a function, I can say get details and I will give the keyword function and I will declare my function inside this and I can say return this dot number and then I will separate it with a space this dot category and another space and lastly this dot short description you will have to add this keyword here to access the properties of your object and this function will return me all of the values of these properties concatenated with spaces next is how can we access properties and its function we can use object name dot property name or for accessing the function we can use object name dot function name let's quickly see this I will add a print statement for printing we will use gs dot add info message and I can say inc dot number so this particular statement will return me just the number of that object 
and I will run this script and you are able to see that it has returned me the incident number now I will go back and I will try to access this function I can access it similarly instead of the property name I will give the function name and then I will run this and now you can see it has given me the incident number a space then the category and then the short description of that incident so this is how easily you can access the properties and functions in an object next is json.stringify and it is used to convert javascript object which we just declared into a string now why we should be converting an object into a string so a common use of json is to exchange data to and from a web server so when you are doing an integration or you are bringing some values using glide ajax you can very well use json.stringify and it is advisable to use that because when you are sending data to a web server the data must be in a string you can click on the top right hand corner or in the description of an example of glide ajax which i have done using json.stringify let's quickly see in this demo how can we use stringify and how does it look like and now before using json.stringify I will convert the values into dot to string this is essential because json.string actually doesn't convert these values individually to strings so you will have to do it yourself and to convert overall object to a string we will use json.stringify now and I can use var str equal to json dot stringify and I will pass the object name and I will print this string now because this is not an object and I'll say str and I'll run this and you can now see double quotes have been added to the properties if you remember the declaration of an object we do not give double quotes in the properties but only in the values but now json.stringify has really added double quotes to all of its properties and now you should be able to pass this string into any other third party or maybe if you are using glide ajax you can use it to pass from script include to the client script now next is json.parse so when actually you have converted your object into a string now you want to access the values of that object and its properties then you will have to again convert that string into an object and for that we use json.parse so this is a function which is used to convert the string back to the javascript object let's quickly see this as well i'll click back and now i can say where obj equal to json.parse and i will pass the string name and I can say gs dot add info message and I will print obj so it will show me this is the type of object and I, as I click on this it will show this has been converted to an object now again if we have to access any property for example category I can do it in a similar fashion which I had showed you few minutes ago and I'll click this and you would be able to access the category and similarly number or short description or any property which you, you will declare in your instance so this is all about objects in ServiceNow and javascript i hope this video was helpful to you please subscribe to my channel let me know in comments if you have any questions thank you